Reviews by King G. Exclusive to Totally Workwear. Evergreen Turf Handicap is race four here at Hillside. 1,500 metre benchmark 64 for the three-year-olds and up. Horse one is Brazada BC. Fourth up here coming out of a ninth beaten three and a half lengths in the Balan Cup. Trying to find some of that form of 12 months ago. I think staying at the 1,500 metres but getting onto a big track um, with the claim, he's down in grade. He's not an easy horse to catch, but if he does re-get back to that old form, I think he's a great bet. And at the price, at $10, I've put him on top. I think there's been merit to the three runs of his preparation without really getting a result. And just by fact of being a long way back in grade, he might get his opportunity here. I really like the way he walks, but with the four weeks between runs, he's a little bit fresh here. He's been quite purposeful in the way he's walking around. He's having a bit of a sweat and he's got a bit of excess weight through his midsection. Two rich divinity covered nearly as much ground as people trying to find a cab after the last on Cranbourne Cup. It was still day. disappointing though, and um, that was the first time he'd been on a dry track. His four previous runs had been on heavy eight, heavy ten, heavy nine, heavy ten. The only exposure he's had to a good track, he was disappointing. We're up to a good three here now. So, look, while we've only got a small sample size, on the evidence of what we got thus far, I'm leaning to think that he might be better suited on a rain-affected track. Yes, he's coming out of a, uh, a stronger race than what he meets here, and he, he was a little bit wide, but he was still disappointing nonetheless. A race favourite is the three St. Lawrence, who took care of Wego Bam in mid-September at Geelong at its Australian debut. Impressive import from New Zealand for the Kira Maher and Dave Eustace team. Won its debut in New Zealand, then come across one first up here in good style on wet ground. That was 84 days ago. Uh, he was entered to run here a couple of weeks ago. He's had a jump out. He's been tuned up to the mark. He maps to get a lovely run from that draw, probably sits... Maybe lead, lead us back, one out, one back. Like, he's just going to be in a commanding position wherever Johnny Allen wants to be. He looks like he's not missed any work, even though he's had that gap between runs. Seeing him for the first time, and there's not much of him. He's quite a light type, but he walks particularly well. He's got great strength on him. He's really forward fitness-wise, and he's got a professional attitude. Worth noting that track upgrade on your screens as well. We're now on a good three surface here at Hillside. Horse four is Rhinoceros, and he's another who comes out of the Paldora race on Cranbourne Cup Day. On his best form, he's more than capable of winning in this grade. Like... The earlier this year was running in the Australian Guineas, the CS Hayes. He was in group contests right throughout the early part of his three-year-old year. And first up at sale, he ran really well over 1,400 metres. And I think there was excuses last time out because he bombed the start. 1,300 is probably short of his trip. And now he drops back miles in grade and he was sort of double figures. He's now been firmed into 650. He can be a little bit hit and miss at the start, but he's got more than enough class to win this race. He's such an eye-catching horse. He's really handsome and he always looks good in the mounting yard. He moves well. He's got plenty of fitness on his side. Typical for him to be towy and typical to wear the bandages. Damien Thornton back aboard the 5 air defence. He races well, this horse, but he just doesn't know how to win. In his past... I don't know how many starts. He's been more than competitive, but he just can't get the result. And he's got a racing style where he needs a lot of things to fall into play. He doesn't begin the best. He can sort of just travel in behind horses and look like he's going to explode, but he doesn't really go through those gaps. He's got a good gait here. Um, he's getting onto a dry track, which seems to be ideal. He, he doesn't know how to run poorly. He just doesn't know how to win. Typical parade from him. He does everything right in the yard and is holding his condition well. Well, north of 15 starts since he had a victory. That coming in June last year at Swan Hill. Six is Antarctic Ocean. Was entered to run at Hamilton yesterday, but scratched and saved for this contest. Led last time at Casterton in a 58. Put up a good fight considering how quick they went. They went very hard there, and he was only nabbed in the concluding stages. Comes to a harder race, but finds an opportunity to roll forward and maybe control this race from the outset. Seven Seb Song a scratching to the eight. Ruggiero, who took care of its maiden at Donald three and a half weeks back. Another horse who was entered to run at Hamilton yesterday in an easier contest than this. Scratched and connections are keen to go for the Metropolitan Prize money. Visually was a very impressive win at Donald because he got into a tricky position approaching the home bend and then basically for 250 metres... He was held up. He only got out really late, and then once he got out, he showed a brilliant turn of foot. He should be suited to the big track here at Sandown. He had plenty of improvement in him last start, and he strips much fitter here. He's got good strength on him, and he looks healthier in the coat. Nine scratch, ten state squad resumes, and ran well here this grade over a mile back in March Fresh. Looks terrific for a stay resuming. I think he's going to be vulnerable first up at the 1,500 metres, but he might be in for a good preparation given the way that he looks. 
The 11 at Natter, one of the outsiders of the field, but placed at its last three. You can't begrudge Connections for having a crack. Um, some decent prize money here, only a small field. She's been competitive in her past couple of starts in benchmark and then restricted 58 companies. So a lot of uh, grades lower than the opposition that she faces here. So that's a look at the field for this. Benchmark 64, the Evergreen Turf Handicap, 1,500 metres, the distance we hit the halfway mark of the Hillside program. The market's saying St Lawrence is going to be extremely hard to beat, and I agree with that, but it's just getting a little bit skinny for my liking from a price perspective to back it at 205. Should get a lovely run and will be very hard to beat, but Brazada, if he's ever going to run a good race... This preparation, today might be the day. Fourth up, 1,500 metres, big track, claim. He's had excuses in a couple of runs at his best form. He can certainly give this a shake. So too, Rhinoceros. I'd be more inclined to back the one and the four to beat the favourite at the short odds. St Lawrence is returning to the races in outstanding order. Seeing him for the first time, I was really taken by the type of him. Like I said, there's not much of him, but there's a fair bit of quality. He's well balanced. He's got strength in all of the right areas. He moves particularly well. He's got a great attitude and he's forward fitness wise. He only with the one jump out under his belt, but he looks definitely the horse to beat based on the way he's presented. Of the others, Rhinoceros, he's here third up and looks set to peak as well. This is one of the more relaxed parades from him. He was slightly toey, but he wasn't getting warm. So he's definitely on the up and looks a really good place chance as well but St Lawrence the pick of the yard. And it remains a firm favourite here Bella as I said $2.45 into even money. It remains firm with that quote here four and a half minutes out but we've seen a strong move throughout the parade for the second elect that being Rhinoceros he's now into $5.50 so eight into $5.50 today on race day and that was after the firm in the initial market as well. Rich Divinity of course has now gone the other way. There has been interest at odds with Air Defence, Brasada and also Antarctic Ocean despite being a drifter 11 out to 15 as I said, the biggest bet we've taken on the race has in fact been 4000 each way at an $11 quote. St Lawrence is a firm favourite here, but Rhinoceros is now in fact best back late, 8 into 550 on race day. Ken Keyes has been good enough to join us as Rich Divinity here stepping up to the Wednesday meeting, but coming out of Cranbourne Cup Day and perhaps not the finish to the hometown Cup Day you were hoping for. No, no, it was more about a bit about having a run on the day. Um, it was a pretty unsuitable race. Wide gate, he did it pretty tough. How does today shape? Um, probably not much better. Um, no, he's the 15 will be more beneficial. Um, what we need to see him is on uh, uh, whether he can gallop on good tracks. He's had a preparation where it's been a little bit stop start. He was about sort of seven, eight weeks into that runner in Cranbourne Cup Day. Is that allowed you to almost try and reprogram things over summer? Well, the hope is that we give him enough break that he can race through if he shows enough to justify. But ideally he'd be getting his toe in so you're, you're perhaps the one person in the entire state who's barracking against this turn in the weather. <laughs> Only for his race because the rest of the time I love it. Ken, good luck. Thanks guys. So Ken Key, he's got a similar opinion to what many may have in that question mark, does, does this horse appreciate dry tracks as much as he has shown a liking for wet ground? Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more into that. But the favourite here in St Lawrence, 205 into 195. Bella, you referenced that he's not a horse who is, you know, big and bulky, doesn't carry a lot of condition. So even though he is fresh up, he's only had the one jump out, but you would assume he's a horse who comes to hand quite quickly fitness-wise. Yeah, absolutely. BZ, you hit the nail on the head. He definitely looks a type that comes to hand quickly and he was here really forward fitness-wise. He's got good strength on him for a little horse. He's balanced. He moves well. He's got... Strength where you need it. He's got a great attitude. He just does everything right in the yard and he's really easy to like. I'm not surprised at all to see the money coming for him. He just looks to my eye like he could be a class above. The other galloper I liked in the yard, right, Nostros, obviously the market's coming for him as well. So a few yard judges identifying the race fit horse and the horse that might have a bit of upside. Yeah, Rhinoceros being well supported now into 550 and... And if third up, getting to the mile, back in grade, there's uh, enough in his form card from previous preparations to suggest he's more than capable to win a race of this nature. In terms of the speed, I thought Rich Divinity likely to roll forward. I also saw number six, Antarctic Ocean, coming forward. So they've drawn barriers seven and eight. Um, St Lawrence drawn barrier four. Johnny Allen's got the opportunity to come out and maybe just park either in behind the speed or kick up and hold the fence if he wants to, but maps to get a lovely run. But outside of those three, only you know, they look to be the obvious horses that'll look to kick up in the early stages and be prominent in the run. I would have thought Brasada, Rhinoceros, Air Defence, Regiro, State Squad and Natter um, between them would settle in their positions in behind the, that front three. But... Uh, 
give a good push on the yard. He looks well. His form's hard to fold at this stage, St Lawrence. Uh, clearly taking on stronger opposition here than what he's faced previously. But the manner in which he won last time uh, gives you uh, confidence that he should be able to go to a high level and have a look at the pick seven so far. Uh, there'd be still a, a lot of people alive with uh, Reinberg and then also River Plate winning the past two races. Now going into uh, the odds on favourite here in St Lawrence, holding a lot of money and also a lot of hopes for the pick seven. But here's Matt Hill for the call of race number four. As they're moving in, getting set. Fourth event, Air Defence is in with also Antarctic Ocean. Coming in rideless is Rich Divinity. Also Prasada comes up. Ruggiero and also St Lawrence to move in with also Rhinoceros, Natter and State Squad. $1.90 St Lawrence, $6.20 Rhinoceros. And then out to Rich Divinity at $10 and Brasada and Air Defence at the $11 mark. Here's Rhinoceros. Tactics change with Rhinoceros today to settle more forward than usual. State squad brought along. Jim Conlon trains at Mornington on resumption here with Jamie Mott. And Natter is the last one. Natter goes in. Fourth event. And the field is set. Ready to go. And away. Brasada missed the start by about a length and a half. And air defence back to second last with Ruggiero. St Lawrence jumped well with Rhinoceros and Antarctic Ocean out wider. Antarctic Ocean led and crossed St Lawrence Rhinoceros. Two length state squad. They were followed by on the outside Rich Divinity. A couple of lengths to Natter who's wide but looking to get in from air defence Brasada and Ruggiero. Antarctic Ocean is the leader with the neck arched low as they reach the 1,000 marker, two lengths in front of Rhinoceros, and then came the odds-on favourite, St Lawrence, getting a clear passage. Two further back is State Squad and Rich Divinity. Over a length, Air Defence, and then came Natter, three wide, Brasada, and Ruggiero dropped back to the end as they reached the 800 marker. Antarctic Ocean, the leader for Jared Fry, by a length and a quarter. Second, Rhinoceros, and then came St Lawrence, third. It's been a neutral pace at best. State Squad next, the inside of Rich Divinity as they reach the 600 marker. Natter well back with Prasada, Air Defence and Ruggiero. Antarctic Ocean first to straighten. 500 metres to go from Rhinoceros yet to show its hand. St Lawrence ambles up out wider. How much is in the bonnet? Two further back State Squad and then Rich Divinity, Prasada Air Defence and back behind those Ruggiero from a long way back. St Lawrence lets down. 200 metres to go. Takes over. Kicks away from Rhinoceros and then a wall chasing but St Lawrence under hands and heels puts up three legs almost four and darts away. Dashes up to win it well. State squad up for second. Rhinoceros third. Then Ruggiero, Brasada, Rich Divinity, Air Defence, Natter and Antarctic Ocean was last. Race time of 132.3 and uh, that will be it just uh, short of two seconds outside of class record time. St Lawrence has done it easily. Had the right run. It was an even face and then let down at the top of the straight and loved the 1,500 metres. And being by Redwood, you'd think even longer would suit. Ears pricked on the line. That's how favourites should win. That was comfortable. St Lawrence at 2.10 and 1.20 from State Squad, who's run a race at 20 to 1. In second place, Jamie Mott for Jim Conlon and Rhinoceros third after sitting closer. Geordie Childs for Emily and David Brown. 3, 10 and 4. 3, 10 and 4 and St Lawrence remains undefeated. 3 from 3 for this gelding by Redwood out of Baccio del Vinto and in Costa de Lago Mir. And that's been a, a dominant display in race number 4 on the program. St Lawrence winning. The only interest in, is in the winning margin after the fourth race. Owned by A. Keir, J. O'Neill, along with G. Harvey, D. Degenhart, L. Caminiti, P. Cook, J. Simmons, Miss S. Fitzgerald, the AK Racing Group, along with G. Van Amiden, A. Willoughby, Carty Racing, V. Keir and S. Lewin, along with R. Wilson. Three first St. Lawrence, second number 10 State Squad, third number four Rhinoceros, fourth number eight Ruggiero, 132.32 the time, which is just under two seconds outside of class record time, three, ten, four and eight. OK, that's been dominant. No margins as yet, but uh, no doubt about it. St Lawrence winning race number four. Lee Allen representing the stable is now down with Nigel.
Yeah, wonderful return from St. Lawrence as Lee Allen joins us. And Lee, the delay since that first Australian start in mid-September hasn't been by design. No, it wasn't planned. Uh, we we gas for show and he had a few ulcers, so he had to get over that, have a freshen up, had about a month off, and um, we switched up his training. He went back to Ballarat. Uh, it's much more relaxed there, and um, it seems to have done the trick. My word, it has. What's he capable of throughout the summer months here, and is there anything in mind in terms of a distance range for him in, in time? Well, yeah, we'll just go through the grades. He, look, he can obviously get up to a bit more of a trip. Um, might have been a bit of a query on the ground, but he seems to have gone through that pretty quickly pretty good so uh yeah we'll just we'll map out a plan and see how see how far he can get out in trip a couple more runners for the stable on the remainder of this program what a fox and saucy horsey what do you make of both their chances yeah what a fox has got a chance and um saucy horsey yeah we, we're not sure whether the the ground or on top of the ground is her best is her best um uh ground but we'll, we'll give her a try and we'll see uh, if she's more effective, but we'll see. <laughs> well, the fact-finding mission worked for St. Lawrence. May it strike again. What well on, Lee. Thanks, Nigel. From Lee Allen to John Allen, who's been able to deliver there on St. Lawrence. Mark Sara was in the saddle for that win at Geelong back in mid-September. John Allen, who's riding the Nullarbor at the moment, having spent some time in WA, of course, aboard Steinem in the Northerly on Saturday, John, an impressive return from this horse. Uh, what was it like from your perspective? Yeah, it looked very straightforward. Uh, nice big horse, big stride. Uh, it's obviously a little workman, like maybe his first start here in Australia, but um, step up and trip the experience and big track today. Uh, really appreciate it. Were you pleasantly surprised at how he handled the ground, particularly given Lee and the stables queries? Um, look, he, nice moving horse. So, yeah, he kind of got across the ground pretty easy. So, um, certainly felt nice going to the gates on it anyhow. So, uh, yeah, look, handling conditions, no worries. You like putting these silks on? Any word on where your main man Hitotsu is? Yeah, look, he's back in work. I think he's um, back under saddle the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can look forward to him in the autumn time. Well done, John. Cheers, thank you. Dominant performance from the winner, St Lawrence, into 195, was expected to get a result and certainly lived up to that. Was put into a nice position. It was a very comfortable watch if you're on the favourite. Just travelled in behind the speed. Uh, rolling forward, we had Antarctic Ocean, Rhinoceros was keen, settling outside the leader, uh, was put into the race after being well supported, but it had no match for the finishing burst of St Lawrence. And the time of 1.32.32 is only moderate compared to standard time of 1.31.44, so they were only very pedestrian in the first half. It turned into a dash home, and the horse with the best turn of foot has completely destroyed this field. Bella, you were quite keen on him uh, pre-race and he's lived up to that expectation on the racetrack as well. Yeah, he was a standout in this mounting yard. He just looked like he's got a bit of quality about him and now undefeated. We know how hard that is for horses to do, only having his third career start and he's absolutely nailed them. And interesting to hear the thoughts from the stable saying that they weren't sure how, we would, how he'd handle the good surface, but I think he well and truly ticked that box. He was uh, miles above his rivals today. Good performance from State Squad, second up. A few horses getting to the line nicely from back in the field, but judging by the overall time, I would have suggest they've only gone very slow through the first, you know, early to middle stages of that race and then turned into a dash home. So there might be a few forgivable performances there, but you can't take anything away from the winner. It was head and shoulders above. As we go to a quick break here on Racing.com.